Thank you very much, Willem, uh, for that. And uh, thank you, Isabel, for your kind words. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure serving in the working group and as uh, the chair of the working group, indeed. And I'd just like to also extend my, uh, my thank you and uh, welcome to uh, all the participants joining the, the third round table of the working group on the Euro, Euribor, um, so the Euro risk-free rate. So in my speech, I'd like to cover kind of two things. I think the first one, is with respect to how far we are in the transition from Ionia to the Euro STR rate. And the second, which is uh, the next step, which is the recommendation of the Euribor fallback measures based on the Euro STR. Okay. But before I begin, uh, like Isabel, I would like to thank the public sector observers, whether it's the ECB, ESMA, FSMA, and the European Commission for their continuous support. And a big thank you to all 82 working group and subgroup members for their determine, determination and their uh, commitment to making this transition a success. The working group mandate, just to remind you, is to identify and recommend risk-free rates that could serve as alternative to the current benchmarks uh, that is used in the financial instruments and contracts in the Eurozone and to facilitate a smooth transition to the recommended new rate. While the support of the public sector observers of the working group is key, I think I'd like to remind and emphasize that it is the private sector responsibility to deliver on the mandate by complying with the EU benchmarking regulation and respecting the EOSCO's principle for financial benchmark. Now, how far are we doing with the transition from EONIA to the Euro SDR? Um, I think in, on the 2nd of October 2019, the ECB started the daily publications of the recommended Euro free rate, the Euro SDR. On the same day, EMMI recalibrated EONIA to the Euro SDR plus a fixed spread of eight and a half basis points, as some of you are and most of us are aware. And the announcement that uh, we this uh, rate will only be uh, published until the 3rd of January 2022. That sounds a long way away, but in fact, we're already at the end of 2020, and that gives us barely 12 months before ceasing the publishment of Eonia. So time is clearly of the essence. The working group provided several helpful recommendations to ensure smooth transition from Eonia to Euro SDR. For example, the working group uh, basically helped with the transition path from Eonia to the Euro SDR, the legal measures for the new and legacy contracts referring to EONIA, the fallback measures for Euro STR, risk management, financial accounting measures as an example, and some concrete recommendations on how to tackle the transition for cash and derivative products from an operational as well as a valuation standpoint. So what we need to do uh, as market participants is that the key dates should now be the 3rd of January 2022, and that is the focus. And as Isabel highlighted in her speech, so far the progress in adoption of the Euro SDR has been rather slow. The market, we only have one year left to transition completely from Ionia to Esther. Therefore, the working group would like to encourage and remind you all to take a close look at the recommendations and see what your institution can do to make this transition successful. This will ensure market stability, and this will also ensure that uh, Euro SDR will form a firm basis for the Euribor fallback measures as discussed. This brings me to my second topic and the purpose of today's round table, which is about finding a fallback to the Euribor based on Euro SDR. The working group welcomed the authorization of EMMI to provide Euribor in July 2019. This will allow market participants to continue to use Euribor. However, as Isabel mentioned, the EU benchmark regulations require the introduction of robust fallbacks uh, to the Euribor in contracts to avoid market disruption in the event that the Euribor becomes unavailable. Therefore, after the working group finished the recommendation on Eonia to ESTA or Euro SCR transition, the working group has been focused on finding a suitable Euribor fallback measures based on Euro SDR. 
This resulted in two very comprehensive and complete public consultation papers which were launched on the 23rd of November. These public consultations provided proposals on number one, the Euribor fallback trigger events, and number two, the Euribor fallback measures for cash products. The first consultation identifies a generic set of potential events that would trigger the activation of the Euribor fallbacks. In the event, the Euribor would permanently uh, cease to exist. The second consultation identified the most appropriate Euribor fallback rates for each cash products. This Euribor fallback rates will be based on number one, and the Euro STR based term structure methodology, and number two, a spread adjustment methodology to mitigate potential value transfer in case the fallbacks are triggered. The second consultation will also propose market conventions to use for the calculation of compounded term rates based on the Euro STR. Here it is important to measure that the working group has been liaising with International Swap and Derivatives uh, Association, ISTA, and similar initiative in other jurisdictions to ensure alignment to the extent possible. Um, in addition, the working group takes into account the recommendations provided by the Financial Stability Board as well. The deadline for the response to both public consultation, as mentioned, is uh, the 15th of January next year at, uh, well, at five o'clock uh, Central European time. So to summarize, I have shared with you how far we are in the transition from EONIA to Euro STR and in recommending Euro fallback measures based on Euro STR. Given the major eyeball transition uh, underway and the impact on all market participants, the working group is working in a transparent way. So on the U ECB website, you will find the recommendation minutes and the presentations of every working group meeting that has taken place. The working group is also committed to consulting with market participants on important decisions as we are doing, for example, today on the Euribor fallback measures. So I'm grateful that you're all here today and for you, your interest in this major European reform. Euribor is widely used in contracts ranging from derivatives uh, up into uh, very common products like mortgages by professional market players up to consumers. Therefore, I hope that the input that you will obtain today encourage you to respond to the public consultations paper because the widespread use of Euribor, it is of great importance that your voice be heard. Thank you very much and over to you, Willem.